Happy New Year, everybody. I'm happy to go straight to questions. <coughs> um, I guess, yeah, what, what policies in particular are encouraging uh, extremism? What I have said is that the policies of the current government embolden racism within New Zealand. So uh, the approach of, for example, um, effectively removing in many cases the use of te reo Māori within the public service. Um, the debate around the Treaty Principles Bill has the potential to really embolden racism in New Zealand. And I don't think those are things that responsible governments should do. You and Christopher Luxon and National have effectively ruled out taking the Treaty Principles Bill. Further, they also don't have the support of New Zealand first. So that is dead legislation. Okay. So, to you, do you see any point to that? I think that's a meaningless gesture. Um, introducing legislation, it will have the government's imprimatur on it when it's introduced. It will be government legislation. So, if the government doesn't intend to progress it, it shouldn't introduce it. Do you know you... how much it might cost, or the time wasted from such a? I think the biggest cost will be the division that it will open up. You said today. There, you basically said that Chris Luxon needs to own this issue. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. So, the, for let's just take the Treaty Principles Bill, for example. That will be introduced as government legislation. So it will have the endorsement of the whole of the government on it. Even if they're saying at some point you know, down the track they'll withdraw their support from it, it will be government legislation. But is it your view that, is it your view that Chris, is it your view that the Prime Minister has been shirking his responsibility and ownership of that issue? Well, Christopher Luxon is the Prime Minister of New Zealand. He leads the entirety of the government. When ministers speak, they are speaking on his behalf. You said in your speech today that the, some of the policies emboldened racists, um, and you mentioned the likes of Hobson's Pledge. Why didn't you just say that the policies were racist, or is that something that you don't believe? Uh, they certainly are emboldening racist behaviour. So, I mean, everybody who looks online will be able to see it. There, there's plenty of clear evidence of that. The select committee process, for example, on the treaty principle bill, I suspect, will be ugly. Um, and I just think we should avoid that. What's what, the difference between emboldening racists and being racist? Well, I haven't seen the I haven't seen the bill, so I'm not going to I'm not going to put a label on the bill before I've even seen it. But I don't think it's even been drafted yet. But the process will certainly embolden racism. Yeah. 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 Regrets during the election campaign is one of them not standing up more proudly behind co-governance measures and other um, parts of the government's Maori agenda. Well, well, I think what you'll find is during the election campaign, I did exactly that. Um, but I don't think the government as a whole did that enough over this, you know, our government over the six years that we were in, in office. Is that a bit of a yeah. whack for Jacinda? No, not at all. I think we all all need to accept responsibility for that. And I do want to also, um, I guess, um, differentiate between our Māori members and our non-Māori members. I, I don't think it should just be our Māori members uh, who we were asking to present that. I think uh, those of us in the government who are non-Māori actually had more of a responsibility to speak on those issues. Uh, I don't think that we necessarily lived up to that in the way that we should have. The Prime Minister said that he takes full... Do you feel the government didn't do enough to bring non-Māori along that journey? And what will you spend this term working on sort of the next election? I did speak a little bit about this before the election. I think if you look at um, the debate around water reform, for example, I think we left Nanaia Mahuta to present that and to front that and to be the subject of quite a lot of overt racism as well as um, more subtle racism. Um, and I think that um, the non maori government should have supported her a lot more through what that time, process. The Prime Minister had said that... And what, what message did you send in those private meetings? Um, I'm not going to speak for them. I'll let them speak for themselves and I'm sure you know over the course of the day they will do that, um, but I can certainly speak in terms of the messages that we have um, presented, which is a commitment to continuing to make progress the, Did you um, the, the, and, and continuing to call out um, things that we disagree with and that we think will take New Zealand backwards. The Prime Minister had said uh, in post-cab that he was responsible as the leader of the coalition government for all policies, including the treaties bill, yes. but he's actually uh, speaking in, you know, uh, He's not, he, there's ambiguity in his corridor to Māori. So do you think that he needs to be more open, transparent and honest with Māori? Oh, I think Christopher Luxon needs to accept responsibility for the actions of all of his government. When David Seymour speaks, when Winston Peters speak, they are speaking on behalf of the government, therefore they are speaking on behalf of him. You mentioned yeah, Anaya Mahuta before and that she copped a lot of flack for the Three Waters. Did you ever personally apologise to her for the flack that she copped? Oh, we've had quite a lot of uh, conversations over the last um, little while about that, including um, you know, in, the, in that tenure that I had as Prime Minister. And I acknowledged to her personally, as I have publicly, that I thought we should have supported her more through but that. Did you 
you say, sorry that this happened, sorry that we put you in this position? No, on a personal level, I've reflected on the fact that as a minister who was not associated with any of that legislation at the time, that <clears throat> I, I could have, amongst others, been more supportive. Do you think the, that there's the a divisiveness to... that exists at the moment when it comes to race relations issues? Sorry? I'm... Do you think that there's a divisiveness that exists in New Zealand at the moment when it comes to race relations issues? I certainly think that the approach of the current government has the potential to be incredibly divisive. Uh, I think the role of government, the role of political leaders, should be to find unity and to seek out unity rather than seek out division, as this government seems so to be that trying that to do. If there is a divisiveness, then do you think that that's only started since the election occurred, or do you think there was an element of that already in existence prior? I think um, fear of the unknown, uncertainty uh, around the future of the um, Crown Māori relationship and the relationship between Māori and non-Māori always bubbles away below the surface in New Zealand. I think that the goal of responsible political leaders though is not to play to that, um, it's to make sure that we're actually speaking to that uncertainty and uh, and removing the uncertainty. But so tease that out then, if it did exist before the election, which was obviously under the, the last government, what do you need to do and have you thought over the summer break about what it might look like for Labour to actually address the issue and the divisiveness, what went wrong and how you actually fix that before the next election, which is the suggestion you made today was that you would be back here in yeah. three years' time celebrating something new. I, I still believe that the, the arc of human history bends towards progress, as someone far more eloquent than me once said. But... Um, that doesn't mean that, that there won't be blips along the way, and there certainly, I think we're going through one at the moment. I think the job of it for, for us as the Labour Party is to make sure that we're reflecting on things we could have done better when we were in government, and that does include uh, better elaborating and explaining things like water reform, what we were doing and why we were doing it. The no, report into Te Aka Whai Order, the government's report into Te Aka Whai Order, should have been released this week. It has been sent to Cabinet. What can we expect the government to do before or after Waitangi, the release of that? Oh, I'd encourage them to release it. You probably we spent all of about one minute talking about uh, the link between Labour and Ratsana before actually moving on to kind of attacking the, the current government. Do you think that you got the tenor right, given that Ratsana is known as a, well, known to prefer things not to get too political? You know, you didn't really spend much on the ties between Ratsana yeah. and, and Labour. Generally speaking, in these sorts of events, I, I'll take my cue from the, the speeches that come before me. And so uh, they set the tone in their speeches, which were very political, and so I responded in kind. And what did you make of that? What, the fact that those speeches were very political. What, um, why do you think that is? I think there's a huge amount of anxiety amongst Māori around you know, what the policies of this government are going to mean for Māori, but also for the sense of unity that we have as a country and the sense of cohesiveness that we have as a country. How do you and so, you know, I've been I've been coming to um, uh, to these events for over 20 years now, and there are years where it's relatively non-political, and then there are years where it's more political, and this is certainly one of the more political ones. Well, can I ask really that same question? question? Is it political? <laughs> Was it corridor or political, or was it just honest, open Māori corridor? Well, the honest, open Māori, the honest, open Māori corridor was all political. Mm. And if you didn't understand Māori, then a uh, number of you probably didn't understand some of the corridor coming from the pie. Um, uh, our, prim, our leader was he had it fully translated to him from uh, Pini Henare and so he took his cue from what was happening out there and this was so political today that uh, it wasn't funny you you heard uh, kōrero like kōrero that means the enemy uh, and, 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 that, and they were talking about us all operating as one as one group and so um, I was really uh, pleased we were really pleased with our leader's uh, kōrero because he latched on to what was happening so from the So this is just not a church service is oh, it? Well, well no that's David Seymour uh, negativity and criticism and disrespect, that's what he you know, Ratan has always been very very political, they've, they've always gone down that track, so I think that the tenor of the speech was, was perfect. Could you elaborate on the um, chat about the enemy, when, in what context was that? So, sorry? Could you just elaborate for us, Pakia non Maori speakers, on the discussion around the enemy, how that was... Oh, well, they, they're just saying, this, what they were saying in the fake quarter or that, was that there was one enemy that's what they were saying, and the enemy was the government. Mm. And so they wanted us to all whakakotahi, or come together as a group, Greens, <coughs> Party Māori, Labour, uh, and, and, and operate it as an effective group in coordination with Te Hahi Ratana, with Kingi Tanga, and with the uh, celebrations coming up in, in Waitangi. So that was, the, that was the thrust from the pie, and, and we heard it, and that's why I think we were really pleased, weren't we, mm. team, in terms of our leader's response. Does it Are bother you? or worry you that Ratana and Waitangi may increasingly become more political? Well, it doesn't worry me, 
because they've always been there. Rātana have always been political. That's why they put MPs into the Labour Party. That's why we had people like Kitty Tapu Allen, Reno Titi Katane, who are the Adrian, uh, Adrian Rudolph, the Mason. Speaker of Soraya Mason. So they're a very political group up here, um, and it's not it's not often that they'll just talk just about hahi ratana. They talk about politics all the time. Am I really going to like what's in the Takafai order report? Okay, there we go. When you heard those comments on the pie, what did you think of the advance that was what the political venue anticipated? No, I made a few prompts, you know, wrote, wrote down a few notes on, on, on a few cards of things that I wanted to talk about, um, but I was largely responding to what I heard. Um, you all have seen I had a few cards in front of me. While I've been working on my Te Reo Māori over the summer, um, I'm still not quite confident enough to do it without having a few prompts in front of me when I forget the odd line uh, and so on, so um, hence you will have seen I still How have you critical of Christopher Luxon last year at last year? Um, I... I I've always followed the tone of the hosts. If Labour didn't, if Labour didn't get it right for Māori in the last government, how can they have faith that you will if you are elected government? I, I, I disagree with your characterisation of, well, you of, of that what we just said. You didn't always get it right. I, I, that was a more general statement. We didn't get everything right, but it also it was primarily in that context it was about the fact that we didn't um, perhaps take all non-Māori New Zealanders with us in some of the things that we were doing. How, how can they have faith that, that you will? Point? Why did you feel the need to make that point? I feel like this is the first time we've heard you um, the party you own the fact that you failed to take with you. I, I, well, no, I, I disagree with that. You will have um, seen me acknowledge that during the election campaign, um, and I've, I've been pretty open about that in the entire time that I was both um, Prime Minister and then as Leader of the Opposition. I do think we need to do more. What do you, um, what do you think? Uh, David Seymour says that he's sick and tired of uh, people being defined by their race. What do you make of that? I disagree with that characterisation. I don't think um, that making sure that we are in creating an environment in which Māori can thrive uh, in the future is in any way defining people by race. Um, I think it's recognising that um, Māori have often been defined by race in a very negative way um, in the history of this country, and that's something that we've got to continue to challenge. How do you think? Can we ask about um, the Red Sea deployment? Yes, um, sure. What's your position on that deployment? Um, I don't think the government have really made out a clear case in favour of it. Um, I think we need to be very, very mindful of getting involved in Middle East conflicts with military deployments. Um, I don't think they've made the case to support it. Do you think that if you were in government, this is something that you would have rejected? They said it was the Americans that approached them. Yeah, generally, I mean, the Americans. Um, and, and other, you know, like-minded partners approach us all of the time, um, seeking support for different things, and we choose which one, which of those we get involved with. Um, there's no UN resolution to back this action, and so I, it's not one that I would be backing. Did the okay. Americans or like-minded partners seek any um, deployments in the time that you were prime minister that you rejected? Uh, not directly to me. Um, they may have come via the Minister of Defence, but n but none to me. They were never raised with you. As none, no, none in my bilateral meetings and so on. Penny, will Maori like what's in the Te Aka Fai Ora report that the government has received? Oh, look, I, I won't read what's in the report, but I do support the fact that it needs to be made public, uh, and not to hide till after Waitangi Day uh, to bring something uh, out into the open, and that's been the challenge made from both the Tūranga Waiwaihui, you've heard today, and I suspect will probably happen again in the Penny, Penny, could you just uh, describe the thrust of your kōrero here today? What was the message that you wanted to impart on Rātana? Oh, look, I, I was quite clear, um, due to the nature of the this conversation across the marae, uh, so Certainly remembering those who have passed on, uh, which was a key feature of the acknowledgement in particular of me, but also many of my colleagues as well. Uh, and then of course the other part about making sure that uh, if we are going to enter into a battle into the future that we do stand shoulder to shoulder. Do you believe that the coalition government is the enemy? Yes, I do, and uh, it's certainly been the feedback that's been given to me, uh, and it's always the job of a good opposition is to hold them to account. Enemy is a very strong word. Do you agree with that sentiment? The nature of a Westminster democracy is that if you're the opposition, the government is always the enemy. Um, that's that's the way our constitutional system works. Well, who are they the enemy of? The country, though, it's a very different, it's a very specific context. Do you believe that the coalition government is the enemy of Māori in this well, country? Māori can speak for themselves. Um, you know, they're certainly our opponents, and we welcome Māori to support. And just, sorry, just back on the, on the Red Sea. Do you have any concerns about mission creep? 
Uh, that's always a risk with these conflicts. Um, and one of the things I think we need to be very mindful of in the Middle East is um, the conflicts always tend to go on for a long period of time and they do have a tendency to escalate. I guess as a trading nation, though, do we not have an obligation to defend shipping routes? Um, I, I think we need to be a bit more specific. You know, if, if we were going to go into saying we're going to defend shipping routes wherever they are under threat, there are any number of areas of the world where there is risk to shipping. Um, I'm, I don't think this is our fight. One last question from me, sorry. How would you describe Christopher Luxon's handling of this entire issue, the race debate? I think he's shown inc incredibly weak leadership. Thanks. 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 Thanks.